So what is going on guys, Nandipris93 here with another video and this has to be my most requested video ever since I did my Microsoft Office on iPad Pro video. You guys have asked me to basically review G Suite on the iPad Pro and how well it works with either Safari as the desktop class browser or through the applications themselves. So that's what we're doing today. But before we do get started, so big reminder to enter the iPad Pro giveaway. The link for the giveaway is in the description below. All you have to do is like the original video, sub to the channel and enter through the link below guys. And we're giving away an iPad Pro. So the people that are watching these videos, you know, I talk about iPad Pros and pretty much nothing but iPad Pros. So I want to give back at least one to you guys so you're able to experience iPad Pro like I'm experiencing it in real time guys. But let's get started with the video and we're going to be testing the entire G Suite. So the three main applications, Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Google Slides and show you guys how it works with multitasking, how it works in terms of is it a watered down application and things like that. So let's hop right into the video. Thanks so much for watching guys. Right, everybody so the first thing that I do want you guys to do is to actually delete any Google Drive or G Suite related applications so get rid of sheets slides Google Docs get rid of those dedicated applications that you can download off the App Store because the way I'm going to show you how to use Google Drive is through Safari actually because Safari is a desktop class browser the experience is a lot better using G Suite on Safari than it is with dedicated applications and if you were to try to open up a brand new sheet or Google Doc or something like that through Safari, it'll then default you and then open up the regular application on its own, which is something that we don't want because the dedicated application is, is a very watered down version of what you want when it comes to Google Docs and the whole G Suite situation. So again, I'm gonna show you guys how to use Google Docs through Safari and it's very, very simple. Just like anything else, you know, go into your Google Drive. So type in Google Drive into Safari so now we're in our drive and it's as simple as anything else, right? You press new, you open up, let's start off with a Google Doc. You open up Google Docs, which is right here. The typing experience is exactly the same, if not better, especially with this magic keyboard that I'm using for the iPad Pro. So, hey, my name is Fernando. Don't forget to sub to the channel and enter the giveaway. So you can see that the, you know, Google Docs works as a normal word processor. It's very basic. Just to go over the toolbar and see what you get. You get all of your editing features on the top. You can go to the toolbar. You have all the different files so you can share it, make a new one, make a copy, download it to your iPad, move it around, move to trash, print it out even from your iPad. You can edit things normally. You have the view section. You can change the mode. So if you are sharing this document with somebody else, you can tell them like, hey, you have full access to it. You can only do suggestions or you can only view. You can insert images, tables, right? I can insert whatever I want. Let's do one live right now. So insert a table. You can insert different types of charts and you can even pull them from sheets, which is awesome. You know, add equations, headers, footers. You can do all the normal formatting that comes with any word processor. Some of the tools that you have on here, as you can see, spelling and grammar, normal word count. So Google Docs essentially does work as a word processor and a very, very normal one. And like I said, you can download it as a different file format when you're done too, which is an awesome thing to have here, especially if you're dealing with somebody who uses Microsoft and is on the Windows side, right? And then the last thing that I did wanna show you guys is to make sure that we can actually get two of these open at the same time. So ideally, since it is a desktop class browser, you can just pull this out, move it over, and then all of a sudden you have it. So you have two different Google Docs working that you can use together. And again, these things work hand in hand. So if I do wanna bring something from over here, press copy, move it over, and boom, it moves over to what you need it to do. So it does work with multitasking. You can have two different Google Docs open at the same time. Because again, we ran into the issue with Microsoft Word or with Microsoft Excel at least, that you can't have two Excel files open at the same time, at least not through the applications, right? All right, so let's continue on with all the different Google Drive applications that we have. So let's open up a Google Slides, right? Google Slides is actually really, really nice. I like it a lot. You guys can see this little bottom suggestion. So this is what I was talking about in the beginning. If you don't have these apps deleted from the iPad itself, this will automatically default and then get you out of Safari and open up the slides application, which is something that we don't want. So I always press not interested because I don't want to download those apps. But this is slides in a nutshell, guys. You have the different themes over here on the on the right hand side. And if you guys can hear, I am using my MX Anywhere S2 mouse. So and I'm scrolling with it. And then now I'm scrolling with the actual trackpad. So it does work fluidly with both the different peripherals you know let's add one of these this used to be one of my favorite ones so it works just like it would any other slides or any other powerpoint application right so anything that you would do on powerpoint you can do on sheets and it works amazingly well 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So these are just things that I wanted to show you guys so you can add, change the layout on each different one. For instance, if I wanted to add a new one because I wanted a new slide, it's right there. And I just want to take you guys through the different options that you have up top, right? You have the normal toolbar right here to add images, text boxes, lines, add a background, add some comments, change the layout on the fly, change the theme on the fly, add transitions. And then the rest of the actual toolbar is pretty similar, right? You can add motion, grid view, zoom. You can, like I said, insert audio, video, tables, shapes, charts that you can again pull from sheets. Classic word art is in there. You can format it the way you would want to. Add, move slides around, add transitions. So all the tools that you need to make an awesome presentation are here, which I really, really like. And then if I do want to present it, I just press present and it takes me right into present mode, just like I would with any other presentation. I'm using the arrow keys to move around. You do have a pointer right here. If I want to click that on and you can see that the pointer is going live and you can even use the Apple Pencil. You can even use the Apple Pencil, I believe, which is awesome to see. So I'm using the Apple Pencil to use that little red line pointer and guys, Get yourself a paper-like screen protector. I'd much rather use paper-like screen protectors than just writing on the screen itself. Highly, highly recommend them. Link them below. So give it a shot if you guys want to use a paper-like screen protector. It gives you a nice little resistance when writing on the screen, and I absolutely love it, guys. But, but that is Google Slides in a nutshell again. Everything saves automatically. You're in the cloud, so you never have to worry about losing any data. And also, keep in mind that Google Drive is totally free. There's no paid subscription for it. And again, if we do want to open up a secondary one, I don't know why you would have two open at the same time for Google Slides, but you easily can. Just move it over and voila, you have two Google Slides that you can resize however you want, move stuff around, move data around, that's amazing. So if we get rid of this one now, and now let's open up the one that everybody always talks about, and that is Google Sheets or just Excel in general, guys. So this is what we're working with when it comes to Google Sheets. Very familiar, all the different types of actions and words, hotkeys, all those work. So for instance, if I'm just writing down different numbers, right? I'm pressing the number, pressing enter, and it's moving down. Pressing a number, pressing enter, and it's going down. And then here, let's do a little equation. So the sum of this, and now I'm using the mouse, clicking on here, holding shift, going down, which works well. Then again, closing the parentheses, pressing enter. And you can see that now I have a dynamic field in here. Let's add a little bottom bar to make it look like an equation, and there you have it. And again, it's dynamic. So if I change this number to 500 or 5,000, this number also changes. So if we go through all the different formatting features here, it's all up here like it would be normally. You can change the decimal spots. You can talk about, you can format it to currency, format it to a percentage, change the font, obviously, all those good things. Add your borders, add paint to the cells, move everything around in terms of alignment. So I use that, you guys just saw that I moved that over. So if I go into the different pieces of the rest of the toolbar, if you go into view, you get to see all the different things that you need to see. Insert, if I wanna insert a nice little chart, you, you can see that the chart, it took the data from right here, basically just added it all, added it all up and added a bar graph right there. If I, if I wanna add a different type of chart, I just right click, which is awesome now because we do have full mouse support. I can change the chart style from right in here, move it around, enlarge in it, do whatever I need to do to make that chart look how I want it to look. So if I continue along with the toolbar, you can add anything you need to, you know, add different functions. And then you go into formatting. Formatting is pretty self-explanatory. They have new themes now that you can do. So for instance, I can change it up, change the color of everything. You guys can see that it's kind of changing color a little bit. So it's adding themes like slides did. And then when you move into data, this is what everybody's kind of been dealing with when it comes to Excel on the actual iPad Pro. Because Excel doesn't use pivot tables and macros, especially not the Excel version or the Excel application version. But with Google Sheets, you have that right here through the web portal. So if I get out of here, go through my data, you can add pivot tables, guys. Again, I don't know much about pivot tables. I don't know what they do and what they're used for, but you can use them. You can add a new one. You can add an existing one. And then if I continue to, and then if I continue to go to data, you can see there's a bunch of more options. Filter views, slicer, which is something I don't even know about, data validation, and the list goes on and on. And then tools, guys. So this is where the macros comes into, into play. Again, if I press record macro, you can see that it's recording a new macro. Use absolute references or use relative references. So you have the two options. If I press this little drop down menu, it disappears. But that's what you have when you're dealing with macros. And again, I don't know what macros are. I should probably do a little bit of research on that and exactly what they're used for and why people need it so bad. That's what we're dealing with when it comes to macros for Google Sheets on the iPad Pro. And then finally, you have add-ons. And you can get add-ons for any of the above applications you can see right here basically you get add-ons it takes you to get little almost like plugins to make it easier to get maybe mla formatting done quickly on the fly you know better 
spell checking, that are graphs and third party graphs and things like that. So you can download all these and they work with Google Docs on the iPad Pro, which is a beautiful thing to see. So for instance, people were talking about citation. You can just go on here, download an MLA formatter and put it right into the Google Docs add-on list, which goes right here, because I don't have any add-ons, so I don't really play with them. But that is what you're dealing with when it comes to Google G Drive and G Suite on the iPad Pro. And again, the selling points are that it's 100% free. Anybody can just open it up, open up a Gmail account and get straight to work on one of those. You now have desktop class browsing, so you have full featured and full fledged Google Docs and Google Drive applications on the iPad Pro, which you can see right here, you have the multitasking, so you have everything you need, guys. And I would probably recommend, unless you're a diehard Microsoft user fan, if you're choosing between the two, go with G Drive. Again, it's free. It works amazingly well on the iPad Pro. Everything saves automatically because it is in the cloud. And I just have no, no real complaints about it, guys. So let's hop back out to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video for you guys. As you guys saw, I think Google and the G Suite is actually a better option for the iPad Pro as a like ecosystem for, for work essentially, right? Unless you're, you're at a job that requires Microsoft Office and they give you a license because they do cost money, anywhere from like eight to like 50 bucks a month, depending on the type of account that you sign up for, that's what Microsoft is gonna cost you on a monthly basis. So unless you need it for the, the current job that you're doing, I recommend going on G Suite. Everything is 100% free, everything saves automatically, it multitasks better than Microsoft does, you have full-fledged applications through the Safari desktop class browsing experience. So again, highly, highly recommend at least trying G Suite if you're in between the two. And if you have an iPad Pro, G Suite's the way to go because like I said, it's free, it's easy to use, and it works really, really well in Safari, guys. But hopefully that answers some questions that you guys had about especially pivot tables, macros, multitasking with these different applications, uh, watered down versions, should I go with the regular app? Should I go with the regular application or should I go with the desktop version, the web portal version? Hopefully that answers at least one of your questions and hopefully one person gets something good out of this video. But if you guys made it to the end, thank you so much. Again, don't forget about the giveaway. Also link to the paper like screen protector I was talking about will be down below. And that's gonna do it for this video guys. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, you guys are awesome.